This video is brought to you by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Launched in 1977, Voyager 1 and 2 have surprised us all with their longevity as their planned mission length was a mere five years. It's been 50 years since their launch, and they've both reached interstellar space, a remarkable achievement. At launch, each space probe carried approximately 13.5 kilograms of plutonium-238 within their radioisotope thermoelectric generators, or RTGs. RTGs produce electricity by converting the heat from decaying plutonium into power using a thermocouple. However, as the plutonium decays, its power output is reduced, and both probes lose about 4 watts of power each year. This necessitates mission engineers to reduce the spacecraft's power demands. And that's where NASA is at with both Voyagers. Each Voyager spacecraft carries the same payload of 10 science instruments. Over the years, the space agency has gradually shut down systems that no longer provide significant scientific value. Some of the instruments designed for collecting data during planetary flybys were turned off after both spacecraft completed their exploration of the solar system's gas giants. The instruments that stayed powered on long after the final planetary flyby were those deemed essential by the science team for studying the heliosphere. Voyager 1 reached the outer edge of the heliosphere, known as the heliopause, and entered interstellar space in 2012, while Voyager 2 did the same in 2018. They remain the only man-made spacecraft to have reached interstellar space. To save energy, last October, NASA engineers turned off Voyager 2's plasma science instrument, which detects plasma levels and their flow direction. Meanwhile, Voyager 1's plasma science instrument was turned off years ago due to declining performance. Now, according to the latest update, mission engineers at JPL turned off Voyager 1's cosmic ray subsystem experiment on February 25th. The cosmic ray subsystem consists of three telescopes, and its data played a crucial role in helping the Voyager science team determine when and where Voyager 1 left the heliosphere. Now, scheduled for deactivation later this month, is Voyager 2's low-energy charged particle instrument, which measures the various electrons and cosmic rays originating from our solar system and galaxy. Mission engineers are doing everything they can to keep the Voyager probe's science instruments running because the data collected by them is extremely valuable, given the region of space it's coming from. By shutting down these two instruments, they've bought the spacecraft about another year of life before another system has to go dark. And every extra moment of data is a race against time in interstellar space. For now, Voyager 1 will keep running its magnetometer and plasma wave subsystem. Its low-energy charged particle instrument, however, will stay active through 2025 but is set to be shut down next year. Meanwhile, Voyager 2 will continue to operate its magnetic field and plasma wave instruments as long as it can, but its cosmic ray subsystem is scheduled to be turned off in 2026. The good news is that with this power conservation plan, NASA believes the two probes could have enough electricity to continue operating with at least one science instrument into the 2030s. The bad news, however, is that the Voyagers have been aging for 47 years, and unexpected challenges could cut their mission shorter. Despite this, Voyager 1 and 2 remain the farthest human-made objects, with Voyager 1 over 15 billion miles away and Voyager 2 over 13 billion miles from Earth. Now would be the perfect time to look back at everything the space probes have seen while exiting the solar system. But before that, let's quickly hear from today's sponsor, Squarespace, which offers the best tools for easy website design with their AI-backed design intelligence, creating your unique digital identity is fun, effortless, and quick. Their website design system called Fluid Engine lets you customize every design detail with this extremely helpful drag-and-drop technology. Squarespace also has built-in analytics so that you can easily track who's coming across your new page. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash territory to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.
This relentless pursuit of discovery began almost 50 years ago. In September 1977, NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft began its long journey from the Kennedy Space Center 16 days after its twin, Voyager 2, was launched. The probes were to conduct close-up studies of the outer planets, including their large moons and mysterious ring systems. Both took advantage of a rare planetary alignment that occurs only once every 175 years, allowing them to use gravity assists, a technique in which a spacecraft gains speed by using a planet's gravitational pull to adjust its trajectory and accelerate through space. Voyager 1 was launched on a faster, more direct path that would send the spacecraft hurtling towards Jupiter and Saturn, while Voyager 2 would take a slightly different path that would also lead it past the two gas giants and then onto Uranus and Neptune. In January 1979, Voyager 1 began taking photographs of Jupiter during its approach. And for the very first time, we observed the gas planet's swirling clouds like never before. Incredible close-ups of Jupiter's famous storm, the Great Red Spot, thin ring system, and its many moons were also captured. Meanwhile, Voyager 2 flew past Jupiter in July 1979, four months after its twin. After a journey that spanned nearly 20 months, on the 9th of November 1980, Voyager 1 finally reached Saturn. This blurred image shows Saturn's dark and light bands of rotating clouds, its huge, magnificent ringlets, and two of the gas giant's mysterious moons. During the flyby, Voyager 1 also encountered Saturn's largest moon, Titan, and snapped this picture of the planet's ring system. Post the Saturn flyby, Voyager 1's primary mission was complete, and the spacecraft was on a journey toward the edge of our solar system. Less than a year later, on August 25, 1981, Voyager 2 flew past Saturn on its way to Uranus. In January 1986, it finally made its closest approach to Uranus. This true color image was taken 5.7 million miles away from the planet, exposing many of Uranus's cloud features. Voyager 2 also discovered rings around Uranus and that the planet is tilted by 98 degrees, meaning that it spins on its side. The spacecraft also captured images of 11 new moons, including the innermost moon, Miranda. More than three and a half years after the Uranus encounter, on August 25, 1989, Voyager 2 arrived at Neptune. This close-up image shows Neptune's unique bright blue color, along with high-altitude white clouds that are casting shadows onto the ice giant's lower cloud decks. The not-so-famous storm, the Great Dark Spot, can also be seen. Neptune's largest moon, Triton, was also photographed for the first time. After its grand tour of all four of the outer planets, Voyager 2 continued its journey to the edge of the solar system following its twin. But the planets weren't the only things the Voyagers captured. At Carl Sagan's request, NASA commanded Voyager 1 to turn back one last time before it left the solar system to capture a series of photos, the solar system's family portrait. The famous photograph of Earth became known as the Pale Blue Dot, capturing our planet as a tiny blue speck bathed in a stunning beam of light. After this, engineers turned off the spacecraft's cameras to conserve power as it continued on its journey. On the 25th of August, 2012, Voyager 1 finally became the first human-made object to cross the threshold of interstellar space. And six years later, on November 5th, 2018, Voyager 2 became the second human-made object to reach interstellar space, following in the footsteps of Voyager 1. Together, the Voyagers have had a hell of a shared mission, explored the depths of the solar system, passed by moons and planets beyond our own, and ventured where no man-made craft has ever been. And surely, they're not about to stop just yet.